everyone, and welcome to Book Break. Today, I have my guest, Jenna, with me, and we're going to be talking about something really fun. I'm which so is, excited. <laughs> which is books we really didn't like that just didn't make the cut for us. No, there's one thing I love. It's the trash talk, so this will be good for me. Why not? Start the summer with a good <laughs> trash talk. So, yeah, so the interesting thing about working in the library is you find that some books that work really well for you don't work so well for someone else. That's Some, true, or vice versa. Yeah, and sometimes it's just timing, sometimes it's age, sometimes it just could be so many things. So so we're going to put it a little disclaimer in that if you disagree with us or if there are any of these books you really love, That's okay. let us know. And I actually would like some maybe second opinions on these, especially if they're DNFs, like if I didn't finish it right, and I need to pick it back up, please tell me. Yeah. I'm an, I'll admit to my wrongs. Yes, me too. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to start with one that we all know that I run the historical book club here. Mm -hmm. Normally, I love historical. Yeah. This was called Booth by Karen Joy Fowler, and it was um, a finalist for the Man Booker Prize. Had a lot of positive, you know, ratings on Goodreads, but for me, no. Nah. It's enough. No, just um, how many stars, Claire? Oh, I'd say one and a half to two for me. Okay. And this one was a a DNF for me. Okay, because to be honest, I believe it was yeah four hundred and seventy pages. So, oh my gosh! Do you have a cutoff point? Like I will go usually. 100. I guess it depends on the length of the book. Yeah, I will go usually a hundred pages. Man, if yeah, you haven't grabbed 100. me in a hundred pages, I'm out. Uh, there's too many good books to be mm -hmm. read. So anyway, the 3. setup. 3.85 on Goodreads out of five. Okay. Total. All mm. right. All right. Mid. Mid. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, the, the storyline of this is it's supposed to be about John Wilkes Booth, yeah. which if you're a Civil War person or, you know, Lincoln, I was thinking, wow, this is great. I the haven't drama. really heard about him Intrigue. too much. But the problem is, is this book kind of leaves him in the periphery of his family, which was weird, okay? His father, oh yeah, his father was, they lived outside of Baltimore, another little personal connection to me. Maryland. Yes, Maryland family. Father was a Shakespearean actor who traveled a lot, but managed to be home enough to get his wife pregnant 10 great. times, okay? Great, great, great. 10 children, mm. um, no money, just, so a lot of dysfunction. So you can kind of see how he would have gone off the rails a little bit. Yeah. But it spends a lot of time with the, uh, the other siblings, and you kind of learn about him, like, incidentally. And I wanted this how book interesting. to focus on him. Like, why did you shoot the president? Like, what, Right. Give me was, that yeah. answer. <laughs> Give me that answer. I don't care about your sister. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Your brother that died? Sorry. You know, Sounds like her. it's humanizing John Wilkes Booth a little bit. <laughs> I don't Maybe, like that. Yeah. But, but that was not what I was going for. So No one wants that. <laughs> you know, no one wants that. Yeah, there was a, a, a man named David on Goodreads, and his review was, <laughs> boy, was this a slog. <laughs> and David, I feel your pain because I, I felt so too. Um, and the other thing is I believe the author tried to make this more – of a commentary to modern times, Ooh. you know, with the gun control and Ooh. some of the modern politics. And you know what? I That's got not enough why of I read that. historical fiction. No, I've got enough of that going on in my life right yeah. now anyway, trying to screen out things that are happening in modern mm -hmm. times. So that that wasn't what I was going for. Yeah. So. I feel you. Yeah. So the booth by Karen Joy Fowler did not work for me, but I'd be very interested in hearing. But for you, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to seeing if anybody else thought differently. So. Okay. Yeah. So we're taking a 180 with my book. Okay. And I, as I was putting these together, I was thinking to myself, there's a common theme here and they're all romance books. So I think I'm just a cynic. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, gonna to put that out there that maybe I'm just a critic. Okay. Um, but my first book is Icebreaker by Hannah Grace. Now here's the thing. This is a TikTok book. This is all over book talk. Everyone's loving it. All the girlies love it. Right. And it's a hockey romance, which is very hot right now okay it's in okay at least for like 20 year olds i don't know maybe i'm too old for this 
<laughs> it's well, also you're highly told, possible. That book has no chance with me. So uh, it's about an ice skater in college and a hockey player. And they hate each other at first. It's like a real friends to, uh, no, enemies to lovers. Enemies to lovers. Yeah, which is a classic trope. I dig it most of the time. Mm -hmm. This, however, they end up having to share an ice rink for practices and things. Um, And that's how they meet and begin bantering and hate each other because I can do whatever triple Lutz is and you can't and all that. Um, And let me tell you my major critique. I read 100 pages. Okay. Here's what happened in those 100 pages. They met, they bickered, they skated. It. That's it. <laughs> that's it. So it was just the same situation, slightly different on repeat. A hundred percent. It was like, uh, there's no need to be that wordy. It wasn't like astute Hemingway wordy. It was like, <laughs> I'm writing this fan fiction in my bedroom wordy. Yeah. And yeah. I just wasn't into it. Right. And it did a deep dive into the side characters. I don't care about them. Yeah. <laughs> Give me the supporting plot. I don't need to know their personal life. I well, want to know the main character's personal life. Right. Yeah. You know, I just don't feel it. It's just there wasn't really a plot. It was like they're in college and they skate, but there's no real, there's nothing except yeah. they hate each other and they make eyes at each other. Isn't that funny? Yeah. yeah. And so also the main character, Nathan, really needs therapy and it shows so bad. <laughs> and I was just reading it like, dude, see a therapist. It's funny when you start to judge these romantic people. <laughs> this is my point about being a critic. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm just judgmental. <laughs> like your relationship's terrible. Why don't you see that? Just Care talk to, to each other. Take a guess at what it rates out of five on Goodreads. It's probably five stars. People are obsessed with it. Take a guess. Four and a half. Four point one. Oh, oh wow! Can you yeah. read one of the one stars? Uh, let's see. If we go to they're my favorite audience reviews, and then you can click one star. Oh, on Goodreads. Yeah. Oh, okay, let's go there. Bummer. Some one let's of them see. was so, like. Since it's that kind of episode, let's just have a. Yeah, it's like, this shouldn't be a book. Or, yeah. I wanted to kill the characters by the third chapter. All right, there, is, there are 4,933 one-star reviews. Wow, a lot wow. of people read this book. However, I told you. just oh, on well, the other end, the five stars are 97,300. Okay, see, I'm in the minority. Yeah. Okay, the, so the, here's... And it sold, like, yes. so many on Amazon yeah. when we were looking this And it this was only book ebook for a long time, yeah. and they had to, they actually printed it. Yeah. So, anyway, what's a good one? My favorite that I've just cursorily looked through is this book would have been better if all the characters died. Yeah. <laughs> It's what yeah. we're working with. Oh, yeah. now there's so, a romance for you. You know, I'm not alone in my thoughts, but right. I'm definitely in the minority, I think. Oh, yeah, good. there, there is wish for demise for all these characters. So yeah. you are definitely not alone on that. Too. Yeah, but try to convince me if I should read it. Let me know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You might like it, though, folks. You might. <laughs> you might get further than 80 pages like I did. I don't know. <laughs> all right. Well, my next one is called Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam. And this one was a Jenna's pick. Not not this Jenna, Jenna Bush, but Jenna, Jenna Bush, Bush Hager. Hager of you know the Today Show. And normally, you know, Jenna's my jam. I like I her, her picks. I yeah. I you know she picks some interesting things. Mm -hmm. But this one, and I did read the whole thing. Okay, but I can see why, like this is going to be a divisive book because I, it's one of those books that you're probably either going to love it or you're going to hate it, and. Guess where I fell? You hated it. Um, yeah, I did not like it. And the main reason for me was, let's start with a plot, okay? A middle-class family, because the plot sounded like, wow, this sounds great. I'm you know, um, A middle-class family goes on vacation. They're taking a break from New York City, um, and they have two children. So suddenly, the owners of their Airbnb, which is an older black couple, show up and claim that there's been a major blackout, like no one knows what's going on. The power's out? Yes, like okay. a big power outage, but there's no TV, there's no internet, there's no cell phone service. So I'm thinking kind of Twilight Zone, the mystery. kind of, you know, the purge. like this was billed as a thriller, okay. okay? Which I think leads to some unfulfilled expectations. Okay. <laughs> so it's more suspenseful kind of literary fiction but the other thing is it has a very ambiguous ending i don't like that 
Mm. If you do, this is your jam. But I don't. I is it I a like, fun like choose your own adventure ambiguous or is it like we no, didn't want to write the end of the story? Like, what what just happened here? Oh. Kind of thing. Um, so you know that it's it's almost like a dystopian feel, but it's like what happened was this a political thing did we get bombed did we oh was there a climate event like so the whole plot is the power's out the power's out but it's like lots of weird things start going okay. on like they see like herds of animals like the oh, teenage oh. girl like running running from <laughs> whatever sounds you like know. you made it up as it went along yeah <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it, it's just um i think it was supposed to and also have some societal thing because, like, the older couple was wealthy, but they were black. The other family was what? So I think there was there supposed was to be some commentary. social commentary here. Maybe I just maybe you don't missed like it. it all. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I felt like it had promise but no resolution. It was very strange, but yet in a way it was believable because you know when you looked out the window the other day and your sky's orange. You yeah, know, yeah. This is totally it's pretty believable. relatable, right? So it had you in the first half. It did. Mm. It had me enough to finish the book. And then you ended it with a giant what? question mark. What? <laughs> what? What? Yeah. What's, what is it? If someone out there <laughs> understood this book, could you please like, I love <laughs> email us? <laughs> Spend five minutes being like, this is why I hated it. Yeah. If you can convince me to like this book, I would really <laughs> like that. Currently so. a 3.18 on Goodreads. So that's lower than your last. And my favorite review so far is leave this book behind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is good. I like the Goodread uh, commentary. I do too. All right. All right. You ready for my next one? I am. This is one that you and I have discussed not liking together. We have a joint dislike of this book, and I'd really appreciate your commentary in here as well. So this one is a book, Not to Bury the Lead. But it was on hold for almost an entire year. <clears throat> I think a lot of people were reading it for book clubs. We couldn't get it constantly. Mm -hmm. And it's The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. Oh, Hi. yes. Here's the thing. I love book books, okay? I, I'm a book book girl. If you have a book in a bookstore or at a library or in some mythical place, I love it. It's my jam. I get it. It's my scene. I'm into it. And I wanted to be into this book so bad. Here's the thing. It, uh, it, the whole plot is the main character has depression. And she is suicidal. Trigger warning. And the library is like this sort of pur purgatory for her. Or this resting place before she can decide if she wants to live or not. And the books are all different pieces of her life that she explores. And I, it wasn't necessarily the plot that I didn't like. It was the writing and how it handled depression. Yeah. That was a big problem for me, too. And you mm -hmm. and I talked about this, especially if you've had someone close to you. Absolutely. Like a family or member. Or you yourself. Yes. It's demeaning. And, and that, to me, is what really upset me about that book, because it made it seem like, oh, yes, you just go pull a book with a different of ending. Course. And then you'll decide to and live. And you'll be so and happy. Everything will be so happy. Everything's going to fix itself. Yeah. And the other 100%. thing that really bugged me about that book is it's not really a library. It's, it was more of a metaphor. <laughs> like, we're not talking about books, people. They weren't in a library. No. <laughs> no. The, for, for another guy it that was, was in the same video, spot, basically, he was in a, in a video store. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree. you're right, though. That book has been, and I think it's, it's still, still it's rolling still. out. And I think if you're a generally happy person who's had no experience with mental health, this is for you. Yeah. Because you can appreciate the struggle, and the ending doesn't seem like... Uh, out of control to you. To me, I was like, well, this is kind of demeaning. Yeah. You know, it's like, you well, shouldn't I think be depressed. it oversimplifies it because, like, I think we talked about it. It's like people have ups and downs. Like, you, yes. You don't just like wake up one day and you're cured, man. You're living your best life. It and, just, it yeah. lacked depth. Yeah. It lacked depth. The, the plot was so promising and magical, and I thought this is going to be great. And then it just didn't get there. So I guess it's not really a hate, it's just a disapproval. Yeah. No, it wasn't for me either. 4.02 on Goodreads. Ah. And this one, I think, sums up your sentiments exactly, Jenna. Uh, a lot of people are saying 
Concept was good, sounded promising, almost magical, and yet it wasn't. It lacked depth, the premise was too embellished. Another person said, this book's message could have been inscribed on an inspirational poster <laughs> or a very yeah. large coffee mug. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so there you go. There's your Don't shade. be depressed, exclamation point, <laughs> smiley face. Just don't yeah. be depressed. Just yeah. come on, it's easy. <laughs> Just pull your socks up. <laughs> Get on with life. Well, speaking of depression and the <laughs> okay. way people handle it in books that I don't like, let's talk about Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. Oh, yes, let's. The one thing, too, is like his writing style is extremely wordy. And he thinks he's funny. Yes. Many other people agree. I don't. <laughs> The humor was off for me from the get-go, but he's another one that, and and I get it because if I, like, I read his author's bio note, and he had a very close friend commit suicide. Okay. So it is a theme in a lot of his books, but again, I'm not crazy about the way he handles it. Now, is this the same author that wrote A Man Called Ove? Yes. Okay. I didn't like that either. Which, and that's like... <laughs> The book that club choice like, of of all time. Yeah, people love it. <laughs> yeah. Tom Hanks was just in well, the movie, and we all love Tom Hanks. Yeah, well, Tom Hanks, you know, <laughs> is great. But they and they went from Uve to Otto. I guess they decided they to finally to Americanize it. give it something yeah. we can pronounce. So, yeah. but anyway, this book it was a bank robber that infiltrates an apartment showing, I believe, and takes everyone hostage. I read this for my book club. I did finish it. We actually had a great discussion about this book, even okay. though I didn't like it. And that's one thing about actually finishing and reading a book sometimes yes. that you don't like for a book club, because you'll get a different perspective. Because other people really liked it. And you know, I enjoyed kind of hearing about what they thought about the book. Yeah. It's it like was literary not, criticism. Yeah. 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 Um, but the characters were all supposed to be bumbling idiots, and the narrator calls them idiots multiple times, and it was kind of like wink, wink, you know, mm. nudge, nudge. Only it's to me, it was too, too obvious. It's like, too no, this nose. is not a subtle nudge, nudge. Yeah. You are slamming me over the head with this, <laughs> and I don't like it. Um, so he tries to be witty and quirky and have a deep message, but in my mind, it wasn't funny, appealing, and it was way too wordy. Um, so yeah, and it has, uh, and the whole way he handles like mental illness kind of bothers me. Mm -hmm. So I know the quirkiness was supposed to give me all the feels, but it did not. <laughs> it it did not give me all the feels. No Only quirkiness. gave me anger and it grated on me. Oh no. Oh yeah. <laughs> Talking yeah. about anxious people. It's you. Yeah. I was the anxious <laughs> people. The very anxious people. One review says it should be called Annoying People. <laughs> <laughs> These are great. Yeah. Uh, reading Scored a 4.19 on Goodreads. So, okay. Yeah. You know. Reading One Star Goodreads uh, reviews is a good pastime. Oh, it is. Yeah. Well, the, one, the one thing is, I, you know, Frederick Backman is what, Swedish? Yes. I think so. I wonder so, if the translation may be just I wonder blocked. that too, because to me, it's like, it's almost like the cadence or something is off. Mm -hmm. And that could be, I've maybe. thought about that. Like maybe just the things don't go well in translation for me personally. Yeah. Um, Especially like colloquial stuff. Or, right. Yeah. 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 I did like Beartown, Frederick, if you're listening. Oh, Frederick. Bear Town was good. I don't. I don't hate all of your books. I think that was his first one, wasn't it? Or I don't think so. One? No, no. Never mind. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, um, I'm ending on a heavy hitter, and I'm ready to be hated on by everyone in the public. Okay. Because I'm doing a Colleen Hoover book. Oh, Jenna. <laughs> I know. Spicy. Here's the thing. Um, and I really wanted to like her because everyone likes her so much. And we have a particular coworker who, if she's listening, I love you, but I don't love Colleen Hoover. <laughs> um, and she really wants me to, and I've tried. This is the book she gave me. It's Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. Okay. I have an, another romance, but I have a big deal uh, with misogynists. Okay. And that was this book. This book was just depressing it was miserable it was hopeless i didn't finish it i think i read maybe 45 pages uh -huh. and i had to put it down it was just blatant 
um, sexism. Um, the main character had no respect for herself when I wanted to shake her by the shoulders and be like, this guy sucks, you know? <laughs> but you can't. So she lets the guy walk all over her, and he has this tragic backstory, and she's supposed to forgive him. Absolutely not. No. I just can't stand for it. So I just personally feel that a lot of Colleen Hoover books have a lot of um, assault, mm -hmm. sexism, lots of mental health issues, and I feel like they kind of glorify it a little bit, and I don't vibe with that. No. And that's my spiel. Okay. <laughs> I got to do one more with hang that. Hang on, hang on. Oh. We're not done with this one. Oh, okay. we got <laughs> Okay, let's Please go. Please give us the one-star review. That was probably one of the more succinct and well-versed uh, hate it, hating on. Yeah, a I really that tried to heard. keep it, keep it slim. <laughs> it was good. I moved. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Don't read it. All right. Well, it scores a four point one two. Okay. On Goodreads, and there was a really funny review here that I want to share. Uh, there's better writing on the walls <laughs> of high school toilets <laughs> than in this book. Yeah, I forgot to mention the writing's not great either. So, yeah, there I you don't, go. I don't, I don't jive. <laughs> Do you have a fourth book? I have a fourth book. Okay. Well, this one is a pick that I had. It's actually kind of a classic. And Ooh. every year I do a classic with my book discussion group here at the library. Mm -hmm. And I thought, one, I normally have like 20 some people come. I think I had eight show up for this discussion <laughs> and those eight people were ready to stone me. I think one <laughs> person liked the book. So how did you pick this book? This book was an Oprah's pick. It's Love in the Time of Cholera mm. by Gabriel <laughs> Garcia sounds Marquez. Sounds wonderful. And... Okay, this is the premise of this book. Flortino Artiza and Feminina Daza fall passionately in love. Okay. When Fermina eventually chooses to marry a wealthy, well-born doctor, he, Florentino, is heartbroken, but he's a romantic. So as he rises in his business career, he has over 600 affairs. <gasps> so this is how he... <laughs> I don't know, condoles, you know, his uh, saves himself from this, quote, great love affair, which what I don't his... think this was a great love affair. Like, he continues to try to go after this woman, and she's like, no, not interested. And, and I kind of feel the same way you do. It's like, mm -hmm. when someone says no, they're not interested, this is not a sign like a try harder light, like try harder keep going keep <laughs> going no people it's just move on this is obsession i don't like calling equating love and obsession which is what i felt Correct. happened here um yeah, I hated Twilight. I hated Wuthering Heights. <laughs> I, just, I hate it all. You know what? I don't like it. I don't like that as a storyline. It's And some people, well, obviously a lot of, a lot people, of people, do really like that. And it's like, no, people, you're taking an unhealthy relationship and holding it up like a trophy for the world to see. If that happened to me in real life, I would run away. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I would have, like, changed my address, <laughs> phone number, getting away from Witness this Witness protection guy. program? Right. Give me out. So... But after all of this time and her husband dies, she finally is like, oh, yeah, well, you know, he's been after me all this. Might as well. Is that a great love story to you? It's Marriage not to me. So yeah. she had another husband? Oh, yeah. She was married and everything for oh. years. He spends his whole life pining after this woman. Uh, meanwhile, while having 600 and some affairs. That's like, a lot of Having affairs. sex with everything that moves. <laughs> but yet he still supposedly loves, you know. Yeah, talk about body count. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. yeah. Jesus. So, yeah. Okay. About 3.93. So Oh, well, that's the lowest one we've had, yeah, I think. Yeah, that's uh that's a that's fairly mid for this uh for this group of texts that we have here today. So Okay. I have one last chick lit book for you. Okay. And then it's Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. Oh, all right. Another book talk. Have you read it? No, but I think it was like a book of the month club. Probably. Like top five, you know, in the romance category or whatever. Yes. So, <laughs> Olive is the main character. She's a woman in STEM. We love a woman in STEM. Mm -hmm. Here for it. And I think that's partly why it got so much, like, hype. Because a lot of the main characters in romance books, the women aren't smart. 
<laughs> no, no. They're ditzy. They are Christmas tree farmers or whatever. Baristas, in which some baristas are very smart. And I'm sorry to all baristas out there. But listen, Hallmark doesn't make them the brightest bulbs in the box. But Olive is going for her doctorate. Okay? And I, I like that. And here's a disclaimer. I liked this book to an extent. It's probably a solid three stars for me. I was entertained. But I like to bash it. Okay. Okay. So she meets Adam. He is uh, a professor in her doctorate program. Okay. They're probably about the same age. You know how doctorate students can be a little bit older. Um, And she ends up spending a lot of late nights there. And he (laughs) is very flirtatious with her, but in his awkward way. Like a picture a big, tall, dark, mysterious guy. Like, like a Darcy type, if you will. Socially awkward. Okay. Um, and she is having to explain to her roommate, who thinks she works too much, why she's staying late. And she says, oh, well, I, I have a boyfriend that we study together. And so her, her friend shows up one night really late. And she ends up having to lie, basically, and say that her boyfriend is her, this professor that's a real, like, jerk to everyone. So she kisses him in front of her friend. Now they're fake dating. Everyone loves a fake okay. dating. Okay. And it was just a little bit of a slog. And let me tell you, Adam is the most awkward human being alive. He loves her from the very beginning. But you couldn't tell. <laughs> Except he actually says it at the very end. You could not tell. Because he was so uncomfortably, like, his whole body would be stiff. Or he just just wouldn't, like, yeah. be loving towards her. Didn't love that. Um, just very bland, bland characters, I think. And it didn't really go anywhere, you know? Interesting. That's m- just my thought. Yeah. Is there a is there a uh, character named Raylos? I think so. Oh, okay. All right. Because one of the reviews says, I don't think Raylos deserves human rights. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> I don't remember. Okay, must I'm not be a gonna minor lie. character. Must be a side I just character. That was a really funny. That's a funny comment. It was just like boring. I wanted it to be better. Yeah. Well, this is gonna incense you then because okay. the rating for this on I know it's probably like is five. four point two. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't incense me. I liked it. All I right. gave it a three. Okay, it's probably my most liked of my list. Well, this has been fun. Yeah, I could do this for another hour. I know. Me too. <laughs> I haven't even gotten into the thrillers that let me down. Ooh. So maybe we'll do that on another episode. Are you a mystery reader? I'm not, but I want to be. Okay. It's a bar I set for myself. All so right. I'd like to. I'll have to toss you some ideas. Yeah. Give, give me some disappointing thrillers. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, if you disagreed with our choices or have some thoughts or opinions, yeah. let us know in the comments. Um, as always, follow us on anywhere you listen to your podcast. A reminder that we will only have one episode for each one of the summer months, and then we will be back in September. So, of course. Thanks for listening to Book Break for the Greece Public Library. Bye. Book Break is a production of the Greece Public Library, made possible through the support of the friends of the Greece Public Library. Theme music composed and performed.